Welcome to the first installment of Omnia's February Leadership Series. Speaking of leadership, I remember working for this company that had very low morale. I mean, people just kind of came in and did their job, but really with no enthusiasm. People truly stayed with the company in spite of their leadership. I mean, it really felt like there was a dark cloud looming over the office. And I mean, remember, I remember coming into work just thinking, you know what, this is a great product and we offer great services, but it's just kind of weighed really heavy on me, you know, every single day. But then one day they hired a new VP and it was like, oh, you know, the clouds and everything was singing, the dark cloud lifted and, you know, the birds started to sing, the flowers started to grow. I mean, it was truly glorious. You could truly feel that the air was lighter when you walked in the building. I mean, the, uh, the, the offices, the employees, people left their doors open. People were literally singing and dancing in the hallway. You just felt this light, airy. And really, we had the same workload. We had, you know, the the same work, we had the same cases, we had everything was exactly the same. The only thing that really changed in that, in, in that instance was that the new VP. And that was because he understood true leadership emphasizes compassion, communication, courage, empathy, and setting a personal example. He truly had embraced his softer side, the soft skills, and that truly is what makes you an effective leader, is by embracing that softer side. Your usage of soft skills can help influence your employees and get them on board with your ideas and, and, and now get them on board, not just for right now, but also in the future. When you display great soft skills, it can help you gain visibility within your organization, which can lead to more opportunities and also a salary bump. So, I mean, like everyone raise your hand if you could use a salary bump, right? And if, you know, to raise your hand, you just want to go up there to that man that looks like he has his hand raised. And okay, I see you already know because I see hands going up everywhere. Of course, everybody would enjoy a, a salary bump. And the way you do that is by helping you, is by increasing your soft skills. When you display your your softer side, it definitely, you're, you're going to see it in regards to productivity, in regards to retention. Leadership means inspiring and helping others reach their full potential. And that, and the way you do that is by developing your soft skills. Because being a leader isn't just really about, you know, getting people to do what you say. It's, it's basically how you're going to get them there and enjoy the journey when, you know, while they're getting there to your goal. So that's really what we're going to talk about today. My name is Tanya Devane, and I'm the client advisor here with the Omnia Group. And so when we're thinking about, you know, the, your soft skills and how it affects, let's first really get into the benefits. So what do you think are some of the benefits of truly embracing your softer side or your or the soft skills? So go ahead, you can type in at the bottom. When you think about why, you know, like, why did I join this webinar today? Why do I want to know how the um, soft skills will affect my leadership. And one of the great benefits of that is that, you know, you're definitely going to produce more. Soft skills training boosts productivity and retention by 12%. And that's just by, you know, having that great communication, showing that empathy. That's really how you can increase that, you know, how you can increase the productivity by 12%. So if we just keep adding these little bits, 12% here, they're having a better workload, they're happier, and we all know about the high um, engagement scores you get when people feel motivated. So that's going to raise as well. Also, it's a quicker conflict resolution because we know each other. You know, we're going out on team outings. We're having this great team building sessions and think tanks and, and we're becoming more than just colleagues, but we're actually becoming friends because we're knowing, because we get to know each other. So that's gonna help in conflict resolution. You're gonna get to that resolution a lot quicker. And then also it's building stronger connections because I don't feel like you're just somebody that I see for eight hours, but you're truly somebody that has a vested interest in my success because we have a, vest, a vested interest in the success of the company. So you want it, so that starts bringing those stronger connections. But what, you know, but what does 
excuse me, but if you don't have that stronger connection, what can break those connections is when your leadership just focuses on the hard skills. And so hard skills are basically the specific teachable abilities that can be defined and measured. You know, what are some of the examples that you would give as a hard skill? And you can go ahead and type those in at the bottom. So if you had to think about what are some of your hard skill examples, like if I say, what is a hard skill that you need for your particular role? Like, what would you say? And you can go ahead and type that in at the bottom. And, you know, and while you all are typing, just to give you, just to kind of help you think about what a hard skill is, some of those um, examples would be proficiency in foreign language, you know, having a degree, or, you know, the expertise in using software like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, things that are verifiable. So you think about things that are really concrete, things that when you are looking for an accountant, you may want somebody that's good in, in the accounting software. So when you are interviewing people, that those are the skills that they must have to actually perform the job. You know, if I'm hiring you for social media marketing, I'm probably going to need you to know how to create a campaign for me. And so those are the hard skills. Hard skills are often thought of as the occupational skill necessary to complete the physical element of a job. A software engineer basically needs to know certain languages to build applications. Like they're going to need to know the ones, the zeros. Thank you, Kim. Yes, computer skills. They're going to need to know that information. And then, you know, like a finance director is going to need to know how to balance the books. Who wants to have a finance director that thinks, oh, that's close enough. Uh, we don't need to account for every penny. Of course not. You want someone that really knows the, you know, the pluses and minuses and has it exact. Or what about that waiter who needs to, you know, that person will need to know how to take the diner, um, excuse me, how to take the order, place it with the kitchen, and how to deliver it to the table. Like they need to know those steps. Hard skills can get the job done, but soft skills are what makes the job get done perfectly or makes the job get done in an exceedingly way. So, I mean, it, it helps in regards to increasing the enjoyment when we have that soft skill component. And go ahead and type in some examples of what you would think are some soft skills. So what are some of the soft skills? And that's the definition to kind of help you think about what are some soft skills people would need in regards to your, to your job, in regards to the leader, the manager that you enjoy working with, what are some of the skills that they brought that made you think, you know what, I really liked working for John. He was excellent. I really liked working for Diane because she really brought a lot to compassion, understanding, good communicator. So I, yes, all of those, thank you, Bobby. Thank you, Kim. All of those are correct. When you're thinking about that, the soft skills, you want to think about that communication. You want to think about maybe flexibility, leadership motivation, patience, um, persuasion, problem solving, abilities, you know, teamwork, time management. Soft skills, Bobby, right, approachable. That's so true. Soft skills can be seen as the behavior, uh, behavioral way in which people go about their occupational tasks. You know, think about that engineer. Yes, that engineer definitely needs to know about the ones and zeros and how to program the software, but they also need to collaborate with fellow engineers to unpack hidden technical challenges. And what about that finance director? We all said, yes, we definitely want that finance direct director to make sure that it balances at the end of the at the end of the month, but they all you also want a finance director that can glean the meaning the meaning behind the numbers. We know what the numbers are, but now what does that truly mean? And then what about that waiter? We've probably all had that experience where the waiter, yes, he took down your order. Yes, he brought it back. You know, he brought it back to the table, but it was like nothing. It was basically a wet noodle serving you your food. You know, it wasn't great, but you know, what about that waiter and how will they need to kind of engage their their customers so they can have a memorable occasion and not just a meal and plus also increase their tip because we all raised our hand in regards to bumping up that salary being able to make more money and soft skills is definitely going to help 
help with that. How that waiter got that larger tip and how we all get that bump in salary is by understanding. We have to understand hard skills versus soft skills. And when, when you understand these two things, because you need both, you know, hard skills help you get the job, but soft skills will help you excel at that job. Let me ask you a question. I want everyone to raise your hand if you would rather work with an expert with tons of knowledge and experience but has zero people skills over a person who is inexperienced but is very collaborative, pleasant to be around, and has a strong desire to be helpful. Raise your hand if you want to work for the experienced person with zero people skills. Okay, I'll wait. Hmm, no hands? Right, because that's why we're all on this webinar to understand, to, to learn about soft skills. When we look at soft leadership versus hard leadership, soft leadership is people oriented, where hard leadership is task oriented. Soft leadership involves the use of a participatory style, while leaders involved, while hard leaders involve that carrot and, carrot and stick policy, which is the carrots for the good performance, stick is for the unacceptable performance. And it's basically based on the belief that people are motivated by hope and fear for the, you know, so maybe for in the short term, maybe in the short term you're happy with, you know, you work on that hope and fear mentality. But really think about for the long haul, who would stay at a job if they feared every single time that they walked in the door that they were going to lose their job? No one will, no one function in in a fear culture where if I'm fearful every single time that I might I might lose my job then I'm not necessarily going to stay there so you don't want that carrot and stick policy or, or um, leadership style you really want to have the, that softer side which is more participatory which is more collaborative it's bringing people together let's take a little survey you know raise your hand if you would stay in a company that you feared getting, you know, that you were getting, that you might get fired. Every, you know, every day you walk in, you're thinking, oh, today might be the day. I don't know. Let's see. And you just kind of sit in, sit in your office kind of behind your computer like maybe if they don't see me, they won't let me go. Right. I, of course, I didn't see any hands. Nobody wants to work, work in that environment. Great leadership blends both soft and hard skills to ensure that their people not only have the tools to reach the goal, but are happy in are happy to get to the goal and they enjoy that journey. They enjoy the process. They enjoy the walk because they want to walk with you to success. So how do we improve our soft skills? First, you have to be open and willing to change. Willingness to change is just, it's basically the prerequisite of everything that we're going to talk about today. If, if you're not, if you're not ready to change, if no one can make you change. So you have to really be open to that process. You have to be open and understand what that looks like. I mean, I am naturally a quick pace person. So I like things really fast. I like to have 10 things open on my desktop. My colleague, Cynthia, she is more methodical. And that's why we make a dynamic team because we are bringing different strengths to the table, which is perfect. But because of my quick pace and you know instant gratification, I want it now, I will send an email to her and I'll just have to sit here and wait and wait and wait because she is more methodical. So she's going to work from down up. And that's how she, I mean, from the bottom to the top, that's how she handles her emails because she does it more in, in a time. Um, she handles them by time, basically. And so I'm sitting here and I'm like, and I remember when I first started, I was the one, I know everybody's about to roll their eyes, I was the one that would send an email and run over there and say, I sent you an email, did you read it? And she's like, no, because your email's way up here, and I'm still working on emails from clients that came in before yours. And so now I knew I had to change the way I approached that because, you know, I don't want to make her flustered, I don't want to fluster myself, by, you know, oh, when, when is she going to get my email? When is she going to get my email? So I was like, I know I need to make that change because that can be irritating to a lot of different people, having the person send the email and walk down to your office and say, I sent you an email. Have you read it? No, because you literally just hit send and walk down to my, 
to my office. I haven't had time to open it up yet. So I understand that. So you really have to have that willingness to change. Next is you have to be self-aware. Once you have learned about yourself, the strengths, the faults, your tendencies, it's really necessary for you to reflect on, you know, what really have you learned and grow? And that that's going to help you in regards to understanding those strengths and challenges and what I need to work on and what am I doing well and then what am I doing that I maybe need to adapt. The next piece is training. You know, while learning soft skills is definitely not just book learning, and that's obvious because, hey, you're on the webinar today, but there are some great books out there that, and the one that I really like, the one that's kind of in my, was in my starter toolkit when talking about the softer side of leadership, it's Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. That is a great re read, and that's a great way to kind of start your training in regards to this piece. And then goal setting. You want to define a clear vision for the future. And it's important, this is a very important step, which should involve choosing three to five concrete goals that you know you want to accomplish. And then have someone accountable to make sure that you are following what you said you wanted to set out and do. And then next is practice. Soft skills do not, you know, they do no good in a vacuum. I mean, why bottle up all of that goodness and never crack the seal to pour some out? Share what you have, you know, give, put the cups out, let, you know, fill up everyone's cup with what you have to offer. I mean, don't worry, there will be some missteps and th those are inevitable. So kind of embrace those and understand those. Just like sometimes I will still run over to Cynthia's office and say, hey, did you get that email? Just because I'm so excited. But you know, now I kind of do it more of a joke because I know that she hasn't read it because no one could have had a chance to read it. But you know, there will be some missteps. You just want to embrace that. Know it going in that, okay, I may step back, I'm, you know, I may slide back, but I can always restart and keep it going. So let's take a deeper look into each of these steps, kind of starting with inclination to change. Change never seems natural. I understand that <laughs> or are that easy. Think about your New Year's resolutions that we rarely keep. Okay, so let's take a quick little survey. It's February 5th. Raise your hand if you have kept to all of your New Year's resolutions. All of them. Didn't, didn't misstep anything. You're just right on track. Okay, I'll wait. Okay, really? No one? I understand because I have also not kept to my new year. Okay, I see one. All right, congratulations. Very nice. I am very proud of you. There is one person that said they've kept to all of their resolutions, which is wonderful. I, however, am not on, on that side. I have this, you know, addiction, I'm going to say, because I can't think of another word, to cherry coke. So, Every morning, I would have a cherry Coke basically for breakfast. I'd have one for lunch. And let's just go ahead and round it out and have one for dinner. So I said, the beginning of the year, I'm not going to have the cherry Coke because I know that I shouldn't have cherry Coke because I have another goal of getting into a nice size for summer. So those two don't necessarily go along if I use cherry Coke as my breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So I understand that. So, you know, I have to be willing to change. I have to understand that, yes, I need to not stop by the gas station and get the cherry Coke. So you want to make that change while you still can because the change will make you. Because if I do not stop going to the convenience store getting that cherry Coke, the change that I'm going to be making is having to buy a larger size this summer <laughs> that I don't want to purchase. So you definitely want to, you know, make the change ahead of time because it'll be a lot easier when you're not forced into it. It's a lot easier to accept and adapt and move forward. It's better to initiate the change ourselves, basically using our free will than, it, it, than to let our life progress kind of go down in a negative path. It cha if change happens to you rather than you influencing that change, you are much more likely to feel like, being dragged down like, oh my goodness, here we go. No, you know, gotta go this, gotta do that, gotta go buy that larger size. 
but the you know what you want to do is truly understand that the benefit like I know the cherry coke is bad for me and I know the benefits of drinking more water and you know kind of replacing that with water and I know that's a great thing for me so know where you're going and what you're and, and what you set out to accomplish the clearer your picture these you know the more motivated you will be the next piece of you know trying to get into that change mind frame is don't let fear stop you everyone has doubts fears and uncertainties you know everyone has those insecurities that stop us from doing this the doubt and the uncertainty is normal and you can really never overcome it so i mean just kind of accept it and know that i'm going to be a little nervous i'm going to be a little fearful to make this change but i know that i need to make this change and that's really going to be what's going to drive you there will never be a time where you are complete absent of the of the thoughts and emotions but you know we'll just learn to act anyway regardless of whether they're there or not you know let that fear kind of push you into keeping that change the next is no pity parties you know self-loathing we can sometimes beat ourselves up more than anybody else would beat us and we kind of can sometimes get stuck in that mold feeling sorry for yourself will often lead you down a negative path because you're starting you're starting to take on those negative feel, feelings so you never want to blame anyone you want to kind of take ownership but as you stay focused you will learn that embracing change becomes easier and easier it really will you know it's, it's been a month now and I'm not craving the cherry coke every single day like I was three weeks ago the overall message is that whether you are in life you know you value the journey because it takes time to accomplish anything that's worth achieving so just really be excited about the new beginning and now we've embraced the change let's go ahead and find out about us let's learn a little bit more about us assessments helps you know really to evaluate where you stand in you know what areas are your strengths what areas do you need improvement on as well as to describe the natural tendencies and 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 being that individual what what uniqueness are you bringing to the table with understanding your self-awareness like our leadership report that really talks about your strengths and challenges and gives you a plan you just want to play to your strengths while you know you can be competent in many areas it's tough to be great at everything but understanding what you are great at is going to be that first step to kind of propel you into be successful into accepting your soft leadership in in regards to practicing practicing it and and showing it to everyone the next is understanding who you are will help you in regards to adapting to things and it helps you kind of work through those challenges because now you know exactly what those strengths are what your challenges are and now I know how to kind of work around those how can I make accommodation for those and then also it helps you think before you communicate because I know sometimes especially in an email that I can come off as sometimes blunt direct so before I hit send I want to just read that email for tone I want to make sure that my you know analytical communication style is not coming across as harsh or blunt or too direct or unfeeling and uncaring so understanding what your strengths and challenges are as a communication from a communication standpoint is very beneficial this is one of the areas on our report that I talk about the most with my clients because understanding how you communicate is so essential in regards to making sure that we don't have hurt feelings and then when you're thinking about you know how you communicate you want to move over to how that comes out in training so let's go ahead and start and start thinking about that in regards to your training and and how to get more training for your soft skills well one guess what you've already started because you're already having fun on this webinar and the journey that we're taking in regards to understanding how soft skills affect your leadership so to continue on this journey you'll want to register for the other three parts of our leadership series this month and, and I'll discuss those at the very end of the session that there's three more pieces in regards to this leadership piece and then workshops you know I've gone out to clients um, offices and done half days and whole days in regards to really having a discussion with their leadership team and because it gives us 
four hours or eight hours, you, we can really have some of that interactive um, activities and, and really have some role playing and we can kind of work out some of the things that we talk about and some of the issues or concerns can really be worked out from beginning to end when you have those workshops. And then lastly, in your training, because once again, it's not, you know, just about workshops and webinars, you can also gain some great information from books. And another book that I've read that is really excellent is Marshall Goldsmith, What Got You Here Won't Get You There. And in this book, he kind of shows the subtle nuances that make the difference in the world between being a dynamic leader and a not dynamic leader or a non-dynamic leader. And it's a really quick read, but it's very interesting because he just really shows those subtleties that can kind of make you be a, a leader that people want to go to instead of a leader that people run from. We are self-aware. So now you know, we understand who we are. We understand how we're going to get some more training. And so the next tip is in regards to goals, basically. And we all know about SMART goals, you know, defined as specific, measurable, achievable, results focused, and time bound. But what we're going to do is kind of take it to the next level by making them more specific, measurable, and you first need to provide context. And so when we talk about the context, let's say, for example, that we want to be a better communicator. So because, commu that, I mean, that is a huge, big topic. I mean, I want to be a better communicator. What exactly does that mean? So we want to break that down a little bit. Think about all the types of communication you engage in throughout the day. I mean, we're talking to our coworkers. We're talking to clients. We're emailing coworkers and clients and vendors. And so there's a lot of people that we talk to. There's a lot of different modes that we use. We're texting sometimes as well. The list can go on and on. To make this go more specific, Think about what it looks like when the, com when the communication transpires. What kind of communication is it? Is it verbal? Is it written? Who is the audience? Is it senior leadership? Is it a colleague? Is it, the, is it my employees? What kind of information is being communicated? You know, projects, uh, is it processes? Is it financials? Is it deliverables? So, you know, for, for our example of communication, you know, what does, what, what does that mean for us? So let's say, for example, that I wanted to be a better communicator when I talk to senior leadership on a quarterly basis, giving them the information from my department, from my team. And so another area that I want to focus on is maybe when I'm writing emails to my team and assigning them new clients and projects, I, I want to I communicate my ideas better in that form as well. Or then maybe it's about, maybe I'm a project manager on, on a team, and so I want to be able to kind of send out a better message in regards to their performance and giving them the feedback. So that's how, so now that's how I make it more specific. I'm not only saying that I want to be a better communicator, but I'm breaking it down by verbal and written. I'm breaking it down by audience, senior leadership, colleagues, and my team members. And so then the next step in regards to taking the SMART goals to the next level is the preferred state. So you want to determine the, de the, excuse me, the desired state. Next thing, so think about this. What aspect of the communication would you like to improve? Do I want to improve maybe on the clarity, the comprehension, the message quality? So let's go ahead and go back to that and want to be a better communicator. But now let's focus on that I want to be a better communicator with senior leadership when I'm making that presentation. So I want to make sure that I'm clear and concise, concise, excuse me. Now let's talk about when I'm writing the email to my team members. I want to provide enough information for them to begin working immediately. And remember that third one that we were talking about, that going back, you know, to my colleagues, I'm the project manager on this particular project and I want to give them feedback. So I want to make sure that the feedback is viewed as meaningful and timely and not necessarily that I'm being a micromanager. So when we're talking about that desired state, so now I know where I'm looking for. I want to be clear, concise. I want to make sure that my team members feel like they have an action plan and can start working immediately. And I want to make sure my project members feel like that I am being someone that's encouraging. So now that's where the state I'm in. So now let's go to the next piece, and this is the last piece 
of making those SMART goals and taking them to the next level is how am I going to realize what success looks like? So I want to think about that in regards to my goals. So we already know the three people that I'm working with, the types of communication, excuse me, communication that I'm doing. So we said we wanted to live, deliver verbal presentations that were clear and concise to senior leadership. Well, how I'm going to measure that is one, I'm not going to have senior leadership looking at me confused and dazed when I'm giving the presentation. And also I'm going to be asking for feedback from senior leadership. Then next, when I'm writing the emails to my team, I want, you know, I wanted to make sure that they felt like they had the go plan and could really start working on those new clients and projects. Well, I definitely saw the, you know, I want to see productivity increase because now we're getting to the deliverables a lot quicker. And then the clients are indicating satisfaction with the amount of time it took to resolve issues. So once again, so okay, now I understand what that success looks like. And then lastly, it was the project managers. I want to make sure that they feel like I am providing them with timely, meaningful information and not that I'm just being the check-in, you know, micromanager. And I see that by the feedback that they give me. I see that by them being able to change quickly on my feedback. So when you're setting goals, you want to make sure that you know exactly what you want to accomplish. You want to write down how you're going to accomplish it. And then as well as you, how will you know if you were successful at accomplishing it? Which leads us into the next tip, which is practice. Now, this is a funny little picture because Carrie, our marketing person, knows that I love the Dallas Cowboys. But you don't see Dak Prescott here on the picture. As we know that this is number 12 from you know, uh, I don't even want to say the name, but you know the New England Patriots. So this is a little dig at me from Carrie. Thanks, Carrie. But when you when you think about, you know, soft skills in the leadership, practice. You definitely want to practice. And, you know, like the old adage says, practice makes perfect. So while you are practicing, you want to use the following techniques. You want to use, you know, the be effective be an effective communicator. Communication is key. Interpersonal communication is the backbone of all soft skills, whether it's through emails, phone calls, in person. You need to be a clear communicator because please raise your hand if you've ever read an email with an attitude. If you read the email, oh, there, there goes the hands. I see, yep, I see all the hands. Most definitely, I have done that. I have read the email with uh, like, no, what? why is she yelling at me? Like, why is she screaming at me? No, she didn't. And when I go to the person, they're like, no, I was just trying to give you some information. I was like, oh, that's not the way I took it. And so that can, you know, that can start a lot of conflict, especially if you don't go right there to it. So you want to make sure that you kind of read your email before you hit send, you know, read it for tone. Maybe you need to soften it up. And I'm not just saying add a little smiley face at the end. That does not help because we've all received those where the person, well, I put a smiley face. Okay, that smiley face was really just more mocking me. It's not a real smiley face. There I go with the attitude. But, you know, so don't, so don't just think the smiley face kind of negates everything else you said in the beginning. Next is teamwork. One of the, you know, one of the things you'll always hear companies looking for is a team player. Teamwork is a very important skill because not only does it show that you will work well with others, but, you know, you, you work within a team and you bring a lot of value to the team. And always when you can get more minds together, it's always going to be a better team. And then be adaptable. Adaptability is very important in the workplace. And people who practice it really know that, Every, things are going to change. That's one constant change. And so if you're able to kind of weave and flow, you know, kind of go with the flow, then you're going to be better on the outside, um, excuse me, on at the end for it. You also want to think about that being adaptive allows you to kind of open up and see things from different perspectives. And then, you know, successful leadership paths truly starts with that effective communication. So let's take a deeper dive in looking at what that effective communication looks like. Because we can tell here with the picture 
yeah, the can and the string, maybe not the best way to communicate. One, her whole face is covered, so I can't read nonverbal cues. And that is one of the biggest ways that people communicate, even though they may talk a lot, it's really those nonverbal cues that we're throwing off that people really pick, on, pick up on, and that's how they discern the tone of what you're saying. You want to make sure that you understand tone and make sure that you do not um, necessarily just kind of fire off that email or walk down to the person's office with, you know, um, before you really had time to breathe and think about it. Also, when we're talking about effective communication, it also means listening. That is someone that has active communication skills. You want to make sure you hear what the person is saying and not necessarily just waiting, okay, I'm just going to wait till their lips stop so I can get my word and so I can get my point across. Effective listening is truly about listening, you know, having your ears open as well as your mouth. <laughs> and then nonverbal cues. We have all seen it where people have had their hands on their hips, where, you know, they were kind of rolling their eyes or they, you know, said, congratulations, you did an awesome job. And it was just dripping with sarcasm. Um, I had a conversation today with Cynthia and I was telling her about a new book that I was reading. And it was, I, I will admit, it's a book that's maybe a little bit on the more lighter side of the, of, of the educational genre, shall we say. And so she, she said, you know what, my New Year's resolution is not to judge people who don't necessarily read the types of books that I do. Hello everyone, this is Tanya Devane with the Omnia Group. I'm hoping people can hear me now, the people that have logged out and then logged back. Perfect! Alrighty, we are back in business. And wasn't this kind of a crazy uh, slide to go out on because we were talking about communication so we had to use different modes of, of communication to try to bring us all back together and so just to kind of reiterate what I was talking about when we're talking about effective communication is one make sure the people can hear you that's so essential 
And then two, you want to make sure that you're listening, that people can, you know, that you're hearing what they are saying. You don't want to be the person that's always standing there, not listening, because I just want to get my point across. I just want to make sure people can hear me. I don't care what you're saying. And then those nonverbal cues, you know, you want to ensure that the people, um, that what what's coming out of your mouth is is giving the same that you want it to meaning like like I was talking about Cynthia when I was telling her about the book that I was reading and and it was a different genre than what she's used to reading or, or what she enjoys reading I liked some you know more relaxing type of book that's not necessarily that I have to overthink it's just for pure enjoyment and so she said you know what my new year's resolution is not to judge so congratulations on you starting this new book. But it was really dripping with a lot of sarcasm. <laughs> and so I told her that you might be saying you're happy for me, but really I'm not feeling it from the way your eyes are rolling, the way you're kind of putting your hands on your hips. I'm not, get, I, I'm not feeling the love for this book. And so you just want to make sure that everything matches. And then when you're looking at the next piece of being a productive teamwork, uh, excuse me, being a productive team member, we all know teamwork makes the dream work. And so you want to make sure when you are distributing work that you're distributing, you know, that is even, that you're not showing any favoritism because that is going to be the one thing that everybody picks up on. If you have someone that you're kind of more friendly with than the others, because, you know, I understand some some employees make your work a lot easier than others. And you may be drawn to them. You may, you know, kind of feel like, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to, I'm just going to offer her, you know, to do this project because I know I won't get any, you know, feedback. I'll just be able to assign it. She will do it and it'll be wonderful. So sometimes that can be seen as favoritism. But you know what? As a leader, we just kind of have to suck it up a little bit and make sure that no one feels like they are on the outside of, of, of your leadership circle or, or of your of your nice people bubble. Next, you want to be open. When we're talking about being a productive, having having a productive team, we want to talk about being open for others' ideas. You have to keep in mind that you may not know everything, you know. <laughs> So let someone else in and maybe they will have a great idea in regards to how to accomplish a task. And so utilizing everybody on your team because why they're bringing different strengths to the team, just like Cynthia and I, where I'm the quick pace person, I can handle the phones, the live chats, all at once when answering emails. She is the more methodical one. That's why she's our benchmarking specialist. She's the one that you're going to talk to when you're trying to build that perfect graph, when you're you know, doing a benchmark study of all of your employees so we can measure new candidates candidates against what has been successful. So you want to be open to that. Next is you want to give kudos. Everybody, no matter who they are, wants to know that their boss thinks that they are doing a great job. Now, I'm not saying everybody wants to have bells and whistles and balloons and shout outs at the quarterly meeting and putting their face everywhere saying, you know, you did an awesome job. You are, you know, you are so dynamic and extraordinary. Okay, I know some of you all are probably already rolling your eyes saying, okay, Tanya has too much jazz hands happening right now. That was ridiculous over the top. And that's how sometimes your people will feel. So you want to make sure that you're giving them kudos in the way that they, in the way that it is motivating and not demotivating. You know, here at the Omnia Group, we give everyone a birthday. I mean, well, they already have a birthday, but we give them a birthday cake on their birthday. And so we have an employee, she does not want to be singled out like that. Like it just, she turns beet red. You can, you know, she would come to my office and say, Tanya, I don't, I just, could you tell them not to do my birthday? I, I don't, I don't want the cake. I'm fine not having cake if I have to 
stand in the middle and everybody sings happy birthday. So we no longer do that piece for her, you know? So it's really about, you know, adapting your kudos style to match the person that you're giving the kudos to, because you want them to enjoy it and not feel like, you know, they're they're going getting sent to jail because, oh, it's my birthday, I have to go get cake. You know, that's really not the attitude we want to have on cake day, because it's cake day, we should all be excited. And so you want to make sure that, that you are motivating your team properly. And because people are individuals, you definitely want to be adaptable. It's okay to delegate and be open to others and their, and their ideas. I mean, you know, you want to release some of that control. You don't want to be the micromanager. You want to be able to delegate and kind of give it to others. It, you know, you have a lot of things on your plate. It's okay to give somebody else a little something. You know, maybe you don't, you know, do the big dinner plate every day. Maybe get an appetizer plate for that day and give, all, give the other stuff to someone else. So release some of that control. Let other people kind of take ownership of little projects. That not only helps you in regards to you being able to get things done, it's also going to help your people because now they feel empowered and they feel that you trust them. And when we're talking about soft skills, that is one of those things, trustworthiness. So you want to impart that to others. When someone, when a, when a manager comes to you and puts you on lead on a project or lets you lead something and gives you some advance notice so you can prepare, you feel important. You feel like, okay, they trust my work. They know that I can handle this. And that's going to help in regards to productivity, retention, and morale. And then also be flexible. Think about, you know, top athletes. Think about dancers. Think about martial artists. They need to be flexible and, and be agile. But, you know, what are the two main reasons they need to do this? One is to avoid injury, of course, and to maximize strength. Flexibility gives you a wider range of motion, so you're less likely to be injured in awkward situations like um, during a conversation, during some conflict. <laughs> you know, if you're, if you're flexible, you're not so rigid where, no, it's my way or the highway, and so we're just battling back and forth. You know, we're just bumping heads, bumping heads. And so, you know, you want to be open to new ideas. You want to work with a wide spectrum of people. Today's leaders must learn to treat uncertainty and ambiguity as the new normal because that's just like top athletes. It allows you to make a big impact to the outcome of the game, you know, or, you know, in the case of the team and their effectiveness. Now, I'm not saying that Tom Brady needs to do any more practicing because I would really love for the Philadelphia Eagles to win. But OK, sorry, I digress a little bit. If you don't know how to work with different people in different situations, you can't make, you know, the most out of out of your expertise. You know, it's it's not actually sufficient just to have a strong book of knowledge. So great, you know everything there is to know about the widget that you all sell and service. That's wonderful. Good job. But if you just keep it in, you don't share it with anyone else, then you know, it's really lost because okay, great that you know it, but if your partner next door doesn't know it, then that's not benefiting the company, it's not benefiting them, it's not benefiting you. And then lastly, you know, you want to take a breath. You want to breathe a little bit. You want to slow down, smell the roses. Really, that's all about being adaptable. Because if you just try to hold on to everything and being very rigid, inflexible, you're going to wear yourself out. You are going to burn out. So take a breath. Relax. It's going to be okay. You're letting other people's uh, other people handle things, which is wonderful. Now, I definitely know. I mean, you know, I'm not trying to say that everything is always rosy, and we always have time to just kind of sit back, relax, drink our cherry coke, you know, just enjoy life. I I understand that sometimes a lot of things are happening at once, and you know, if you're and especially if you're trying to take on this new skill of, you know, learning soft skills and, and how to really make an impact on your leadership style, it, 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 that, that is one piece. That's a journey in itself. But sometimes we also have other things happening within our organization, meaning not only am I trying to change myself and, and learn to improve my leadership style, but the whole company is changing. Trends are changing. The company is changing procedures. We're getting new software. That's definite. So now let's talk about how we can lead 
through transitions by using our soft skills because there is a beginning where people enter this initial stage of transition you know when you first present it to them that oh there's a change you're coming <laughs> and then you get to the middle and this is the stage that kind of bridges between the beginning and the end and then it's the end where people begin to kind of adopt the changes people are often quite uncomfortable with change for all sorts of reasons and I mean they're understandable I'm nervous is this mean that I'm gonna lose my job this can lead them to resist and oppose it that is why it's important to understand how people are feeling as change for as the change is happening so that you can guide them through that and your soft skills is going to help you guide them through that so let's talk about the beginning this stage is often marked with resistance emotional upheaval um, people are feeling forced to let go of something that they are comfortable you know you're like we've done this for 20 years this way so why are we changing it now so your soft skills are definitely going to come in handy at this stage you know you have that anxiety that denial that anger people have to accept that something is ending before they can truly start to understand that this could be a bright new beginning if you don't acknowledge the emotion then the people are that people are going through you're likely going to encounter a lot of resistance so truly when you're guiding people through stage one it's really important to kind of help them accept kind of have that empathy let you know let them have that open dialogue with you understand their emotions allowing them time to accept the change and let it go and try to get everyone to talk about what they're feeling it's in these conversations it's in those conversations right there that you that you're going to utilize those active listening skills and you're going to communicate openly about what's going on I mean and I understand in leadership I might not be able to tell you every single piece but don't try to sugarcoat it meaning don't try to say no nothing's happening when we know something big is happening and so you want to be as open and honest as you possibly can you want to emphasize how people will be able to apply their skills and experience and knowledge once you've implemented the changes explain that you'll give them what they need you know we'll give you some training we'll give you some resources you know we're not going to just leave you out in the cold we're going to be with you every step of the way to help you work effectively in this new environment basically people often fear what they don't understand so the more you can educate them about the positive future and communicate how their knowledge and skills are going to be essential in getting there you're going you're off to a great start so now let's get to the middle in this stage people affected by change are often confused uncertain and impatient I mean you said this was going to be quicker but it seems like I have more work now it's not fast at all because right now we're kind of getting rid of the old we're bringing in the new there's still some learning curves happening so things so their workload may have gone up some it may seem a little more hectic because now we're you know sometimes in that transition you're running two systems at the same time having to you know notate in two different ways so it seems a little hectic right now so it sometimes it's kind of they can't see on the other side because I'm right in the thick of it think of this phase as basically the bridge between old and new in some ways you know people are still really attached to the oh, I remember I could type this or I could enter an account in two seconds and now it's taking me 20 minutes just to do one account how are they saying that this is quicker so people aren't going to necessarily trust they're going to have resentment your mor the morale is going to be low productivity is going to be low and this is where your soft skills will really need to be amped up because you really need to talk about you know the great things about you know when we get on the other side we want to have meetings with everyone we kind of want to do some check-ins with them see how they're feeling you know emotionally how they're feeling in regards to the you know in regards to the changes as we're working through it this is definitely the cautionary period this can be very uncomfortable at times because it can be seen as unproductive it can be seen as that like there's little progress going on because people might feel a bit lost remind them this is a great time to remind them of the team goals encourage them to talk about what they're feeling meet with the people um, meet with them frequently and give them feedback you also want to give them some small goals we're talking about we want to boost morale we want to keep them going through this hard part because we're getting ready to get to the end phase three the last transition stage is a time of acceptance and energy 
people have begun to embrace the change and the change initiative. They're building the skills they need to work successfully in the new ways. And you know, they're starting to see early wins with their efforts. So the energy is high. Right now, all of your effort has, has reached you to this point. People are happy and excited because now we're not having to put it in double systems. I see that this new system is a lot easier. I remember when we went to um, Salesforce here at the Omnia Group, and we had we were using another CRM system. But when we got to Salesforce, you know, first we were having to do double, where we had to put it in the old, put it in the new, to make sure everything was, you know, carrying over, and then. Everybody was like, oh my goodness, all I have to do is just click this right here and that email goes directly into the account. You would, I was like, this is awesome, this is amazing. So that, and people got excited and jazzed about Salesforce because I just have to hit one button and it's right there. I don't have to copy and paste or retype it or all anything. And so that that's the kind of the energy that you're gonna get when you get some, when you get to the end. So your, so your role really in that is just to kind of feed feed that, you know, keep scooping. The, yes, it is great. Give the kudos. Make the analysis of how quickly it is now to, to add an account. You know, it used to take us all, you know, used to take us 20 seconds. Now it only takes us 10 seconds. So you want to make sure that you are recognizing the success, recognizing why we are doing this and how we have seen the improvement happen throughout the process, you know, throughout this process. And be patient because just, you know, I'll give you a little note here, not everybody reached this promised land at the same time. You'll have some diehards that, you know, I've been with the company for 29 years and now y'all want to go to Salesforce. You know, some people are not going to get there as quickly as we hoped them to, that, that we wish they could. So you want to be patient and make sure that each step of the way that you're bringing the individual up as well. So now, you know, we've talked about the transition. We've talked about, you know, the soft skills. We've talked about the tips and the techniques. Let's kind of all just wrap this up. You remember, you need both hard and soft skills to be a great leader. I'm not saying it's all about the nicey nice. Oh, John, you did so well. Oh, Anna, you are an awesome person. Thank you so much. You know, let's have a conversation. Let's communicate, you know. It's not all about that. I mean, Anna really does know have to know how to enter in information into the system, you know? So you want to know about the hard skills as well, but you want to be humble. You want to come across as someone that's very humble in regard to, you know, I have a leadership title, but that doesn't mean that I'm above everyone else. I will get down in the trenches with you when we need to. Um, you want to be open. You want to you want to give feedback as well as be open to hear the feedback. And when you're communicating, make sure that you're communicating with your ears as well as with, with your mouth. You want to make sure that the tone of your communication matches what you, what, what you want it to say. You want to listen to everybody. Take in what, what they have to say. People feel value when they feel that they're being heard and not necessarily just listening, but really reacting to what you hear. I'm not saying that every idea that an employee has is going to be something that we're going to run with, but you want that employee to know that you heard them, that you value that, and explain why we might not, might not be able to move forward right now, but you know, keep those great ideas coming. Because the employees that are on the front lines, they are the ones that hear everything. They are the ones where most ideas will come from. And then lastly, practice. Practice makes perfect. This is, you're not going to be able to get it in one day. You're not going to be able to get it in one webinar. That's why we have three others for you. You want to make sure that um, you're utilizing it every day. Practice, you know, once you start practicing it every day, it will become more natural to you. Lastly, I would like to say, you know, ask yourself, how can I approach my next challenge with a greater sense of hard and soft skills? I want to, you know, think about when we're thinking about that self-awareness because how we're going to get there, understanding our soft skills is one is truly understanding who we are. And that was the first part of, of our tip is really that self-awareness. Before I can start making changes, before I can adapt, I have to know what my strengths and challenges are. And this is what I talk to my clients about all the time, especially with that professional development report. We really talk about the strengths and challenges and it's meant to be shared and we can really go through and, and give you an action plan. 
And so I want to thank you all for joining me today. Please type in any questions you may have in regard to the session. Um, this is my contact information, so please give me a call or send me an email if you have any suggestions in regard to the, um, the topics that you would like to hear or for us to discuss. My contact information will also be over here as well. I want to thank, again, you all for joining me. The, the session has been recorded. It will probably be up on our YouTube channel in maybe like a week, maybe quicker. Let's, let's over-promise, I'm sorry, let's under-promise and over-deliver on that one. And then if you would like to have the slides, they are over here to the left-hand side. Also, please type in if you have any questions. I know we're right at the time. And so I want to again thank everyone for joining me today.